Shadow Machamp farms up, fires off the cross shot, cross shot, will be removing Stinky Binky from the field of play. Out comes Magnazone, but Magnazone going to be straight in and straight out. Welcome back to the channel, aka the home of Shadow Pokemon. Today we are back at it, featuring my favourite core, this time in the Remix Cup. All the way since Season 8, I've been using a fighter with a Dark Poison, usually buy one, get one free, with the Double Dark Poison. However, today we're going to be taking a look at how Shadow Machamp and Shadow Skunk Tank fare in the Remix Cup. Rounding the team off, we've got the OP Mud Boy, the one and only Shadow Quagman. Today's battles are submitted to the channel by a trainer we're going to call MG. So thank you very much for the battle submission. And without any further ado, let's get into the battles. And in game one, MG leads his Shadow Skunk Tank into Typhlosion, a pretty neutral matchup if the opponent farms to the Blast Burn. Skunk Tank will outpace by a single turn to the Crunch. MG farms up, fires off the Crunch. Crunch forces us early shield advantage. At this stage, MG is just going to dare the opponent to fire off the Blast Burn. They go for the Thunder Punch, which simply doesn't get the job done. Out comes Machamp. The opponent looks to commit to the Blast Burn, but Machamp's like, nah, nah, nah. Muscles its way through Typhlosion, and out comes Umbreon. The opponent evidently has no response to our oppressive fighter, Cross Chop forces the opponent's final Protect Shield. MG with two Protect Shields, unwilling to shield up the resisted foul play. And you can see Shadow Machamp insanely glassy. Even that resisted move has got us into the red. But Machamp might not have much HP, but it's got plenty of punch power left in the tank. We secure the knockout on Umbreon. And out comes Ferroform. Machamp looking to 1v3 the team. Cross Chop doesn't quite knock out Machamp, able to reach the next cross drop and runs rampant in game number one. GG's and thanks for playing. Heading into the next battle, we see the two partners in Kron, however this time facing off against one another. All you need is a little Drapion and it's a match made in heaven. The opponent does not build up to a potential skull. We see MG still unwilling to shield. Icy Wind gets Skunk Tank low and we're going for that Hail Mary Trailblaze. Trailblaze forces the Protect Shield and we then see Shadow Machamp enter the battlefield. Machamp able to farm up, fire off the cross drop on the CMP tie to the second Icy Wind. And to my surprise, the opponent burns the final shield. Finally, we're going to see MG invest his first protect shield of today's showcase, shielding up the Icy Wind and committing to the counter farm down. Out comes Mandibuzz. We reset our debuff and send out the Quagman. Quag size moveset is always a much debated topic. It seems to be one of them Pokemon. With whichever move you don't have, you always won. And here's a prime example. We've got no Mud Bomb and out comes the basic bitch tin can, Reggie Steel. However, Quagman can do fine here with the Mud Shot Aquatail spam combination. The next Aquatail gets Reggie Steel incredibly low. MG then farms up, looks to fire off the Aquatail on the CMP tire and we see the full undercharge. Beautiful play from MG and we see the instant no shield deployed. MG displaying very high gameplay IQ, mapping out his path to victory, knowing his Machamp needs energy to get rid of this flying vulture back out. Comes Mundabuzz, we fire off the rock slide, rock slide, rocks him down to around a third health. Machamp still with that protect shield, too high beyond, gonna block up the incoming aerial ace with one counter off the cross shot, which hits for neutral, and that is gonna be all she wrote with a very, very well played endgame. GG's, and thanks for playing. Heading into the next battle, we lead Shadow Skunk Tank into Gudra. Gudra, somewhat of an issue for this team, as the Dragon Breath is something that's going to tear through all three of our glassy Shadow Pokemon. MG this time actually chooses to invest an early Protect Shield, which is something we haven't seen him do to this point. He then heavily over farms before firing off the Crunch. Crunch forces us to Protect Shield back. MG then banks some energy and pivots into his save switch of the Quagman. If the opponent opts to stay in, that would have been quite an awkward health range for us to deal with, as we would have still need to go all the way for a Stone Edge to secure the knockout. However, the opponent has made our life somewhat easier of pivoting out into Umbreon. Umbreon fires off the foul play. Quagman withstands the damage and returns fire with the harder hitting Stone Edge. MG this time builds to the Stone Edge bait with the Aquatel, looking to force this energy off Umbreon. Aquatel goes unshielded. The opponent continuing to farm up. So Quagman says, Thank you very much, and you can eat another Aquatel to the face. Aquatel forces the opponent's final protect shield. Umbreon. Doesn't commit to the Snarl farm down and opts to throw the foul play. This looks like perfect farm down range for the oppressive Shadow Machamp. Out comes Machamp. The opponent blowing through a charge moves. This is likely another foul play. And Machamp says, what the hell is that damage? Pitiful. 
the opponent gives up switch, sending out tox effects, and things have gone from a pretty all right situation into pretty dire very quickly. You can see that two rock slides, even from the oppressive Machamp, won't be enough to delete this very annoying bulky nipple. MG banks the cross chop, goes for the wham, bam, combo play pivots into Skunk Tank. We need this crunch to be lethal. Crunch simply isn't enough as Toxapex just never, ever dies. It is so bulky. And in my humble opinion, an absolutely shit boring pick. But you're all free to play however you want to do. Machamp unable to get the counter farm down. Out comes Gudra. Gudra Dragon Breast farms down Machamp. And we take a heartbreaking loss. The bulk of Toxapex in the back. Something our team just couldn't deal with in the next battle. We see somewhat of a core breaker, Clodsire. Due to the sub poison type in Machamp, doesn't fancy this work. And Skunk Tank could get one shot by a potential Earthquake. We're going to see MG look to call the bait. The opponent tries their luck. Bait in Skunk Tank and Skunk Tank holds strong. Withstands the Stone Edge damage and manages to reach the next Crunch. Crunch gets the opponent incredibly low and we see their pivot into the Quagman, saving Skunk Tank as a potential third shield. The opponent this time fires off the Earthquake before sending out Mantine. MG not fucking around, just going to full send the Stone Edge ball in the opponent's court. The opponent fucked about and found out as Mantine gets rocked down to around a third health. MG recognising this Mantine's too healthy for champ to deal with. Heavily over farms before firing off the Aquatel on the CMP tie. Aquatel goes unshielded and does leave Mantine in a perfect farm down range for Machamp to come in and get a running start. Machamp down a protect shield really needs a type advantage matchup in the end game. Come on, show me something weak to counter. Ask, and in this scenario, you will not be receiving as they send out a ghost which double resists our counter damage. MG fires off the rock side, forcing a protect shield. We see a very nice catch, catching the surf back onto Skunk Tank, but I don't think that saves us. Jellison already at the next surf and MG is going to be forced to burn the final protect shield. MG fires off one counter and the rock side, ensuring the opponent's unable to catch. Rock side forces the final protect shield. Machamp going to get outpaced to the next surf and unfortunately surf from this range is going to be all she wrote with MG. Taking another heartbreaking loss, although a very, very difficult team comp for us to deal with. In the next battle, we see Victory on the lead. Skunk Tank says, nom, nom, nom. Very, very nice for us. Dark Poison does resist Grass. or well, at least Poison does. Dark does not, but you get what I'm saying. Out comes Mandibuzz. You see MG take the opportunity to farm up a boatload of energy on Skunk Tank and catch onto the Quagman, essentially just sacrificing it to the Pokey Gods. Mod Boys only have one weakness, which is Grass, so we may as well send it out and look to get some use out of it. Speaking of getting use, we're able to force the first Protect Shield with the Stone Edge, and this second Stone Edge is either going to land for big damage or force the final Protect Shield. The opponent desperately looking to realign, and MG now finds himself with a 2 to no shield advantage. MG sends out Machamp as Skunk Tank without Sludge Bomb or Flamethrower is going to be fully walled by this Mandibuzz. We shield up the Aerial Ace, the opponent able to outpace to the next Aerial Ace and we see MG go from a 2 to no shield advantage very quickly finds himself shields down. He then over farms before firing off the rock slide at poor timing but that is intentional as that Air Slash will never register. Back out comes Victory Bell, we pivot into Skunk Tank, I'm surprised to see the opponent not make that catch. Crunch easily secures the knockout and out comes Dragonite. And I guess why the opponent didn't make that catch, they've got nothing they can tank this energy on as Skunk Tank lands back-to-back -back crunches, booms both them Pokemon from the field of play and we're going to move swiftly on. We see Swamper into Skunk Tank. The opponent fires off the Hydro Cannon. MG chooses to invest that Protect Shield and we are going for the kill shot. Does the opponent respect the damage? Ah. Oh. Trailblaze forces our Protect Shield back. The opponent fires off one further Hydro Cannon, removing Skunk Tank from the field of play. MG now sends out the Quagman. I like this over farm as Aquatel from this range won't be lethal. Hydro Cannon does quite a lot of damage and this Swamper is starting to run through our team. MG fires off the Aquatel to my surprise, forcing the opponent's final Protect Shield. Quagman able to fire off back to back. Aquatel does secure the knockout. Out comes Carbink into a Quagsire, a very, very interesting decision from the opponent, which likely means they've got a Steel-type in the back. We see their pivot into a champ. The opponent baits 
with the rock slide. But it's too little, too late, as no bait will be saving this opponent's fate, my champ. Absolutely feasting. We see the over farm before firing off the second cross chop, removing this silly pot plug from the field of play. And there is the steel type. Shadow Magnazone or regular, it doesn't really matter, as both are going to be straight in and straight out with my champ running rampant, sweeping the back line. In the next battle, we see a huge core breaker for the team. Due to Gligar's sub-ground typing, the poison jabs are going to be resisted and of course Machamp doesn't fancy this work. The opponent doesn't even build up to the potential dig, which makes our shielding decision very easy as that is an easy no shield. We're then able to fire off the crunch, even getting the defense drop. The opponent this time does over farm before firing off the aerial ace and we're actually going to see MG invest that protect shield, look for the poison jab farm down. Heartbreakingly, Gligar survives on quite literally one HP and a dream. MG opts to go down to protect shield to win lead. Out comes Sableye. What the hell is going on? We get a huge amount of lag. It looks like we actually managed to save Skunk Tank, pivoting into Machamp, drawing out Jellison. Jellison going to be greeted with the rock side, which forces the opponent's first protect shield. Shadow Machamp with no protect shield. Two high behind is going to be very quickly removed from the field of play. Shadow Ball. Of course, easily enough to knock out. Out comes Skunk Tank. With residual energy, good to go Skunk Tank. Fires off the crunch. Crunch actually isn't enough to knock out. And it's all down to the Quagman to clean up. MG looks for the Mudshot farm down before Jellicent's able to reach a charge move. Jellicent fires off the Surf back out. Come Sableye. MG's like, nah, you've got me, mate. And we're going to move on to the next one. We see Skunk Tank into Gudra. All three of our Pokemon aren't huge fans of tanking fast move pressure. We're going to see MG invest to protect shield. The opponent actually fires off a Thunder Punch. Unless they're running Draco Meteor, that is the incorrect move to throw. If it's the standard Aquatel Thunder Punch combination, you should always throw Aquatel in neutral situations. They both do exactly the same damage, but Aquatel is 5 energy cheaper. Out comes Gligar. We fire off the crunch on the CMP side to the Aerial Ace, forcing our protect shield back and getting the defense drop. MG very happy with Skunk Tank's contribution, allows it to go down, we send out Gligar, MG looks to fire off the Aquatel on the CMP side and we see the opponent make a very nice catch, or at least so they'd think, onto Greninja. We've got a very hard answer for Greninja, in the form of our Shadow Machamp, we get another huge amount of lag. However, despite this Machamp able to come in, tank the Hydro Cannon, get the counter farm down and leave with a cross chop. Cross chop will be resisted into Gligar, but should more or less put them into Aquatel range. MG's got a pretty clear path to victory from here. Shield up a move, tank a move, the opponent baits, but no bait will be saving this opponent's fate as even a dig from this range isn't going to knock out the first Aquatel forces the opponent's final protection of the opponent's thinking. I'm the best master in the world at Quagman, looking very happy like nah. Dig, still not enough to get the job done. We fire off the Aqua Tower and we take that game. Heading into the next battle, we see Skunk Tank into defense Deoxys. A very nice lead for us. The opponent going to be unable to Psycho Boost and dip. Well, I say that. The opponent does Psycho Boost and dip, but that is single resisted as Dark double resists Psychic and Poison takes super effective. The opponent say switches into Steelix and we respond with Machamp. I believe in this matchup, if you switch quick enough, you can shield the Psychic Fangs and commit to the full counter farm down. It looks like MG opting to play it safe, just firing off the cross chop. Back out comes Defense Deoxys. We over farm, looking to fake a potential payback. We don't got it, but you've always got to fake it till you make it. The opponent actually looks to tank the rock slide. We send back out Skunk Tank, and we're looking to force either the knockout or the final protection. The opponent looking to two shield the back Pokemon, which is Greninja. We see MG. Bank some energy and save switch into the Quagman. The opponent fires off the Night Slash. We don't see any boost. Tough decision to make Hydro Cannon. Will knock out from this range. MG shows huge gojonas. Calls the Night Slash. We're able to hang on. Fire off the Aquatel. Aquatel forces a Protect Shield. It looks like we're going to get farmed down. So we opt to fire off the Aquatel at poor timing. If that Water Shrieker knocks out, that was the correct play. And it was. It's now all down to Skunk Tank to clean up. Can the opponent reach back-to-back -back moves? They fire off the Night Slash. They get the boost. No boost. Saves the opponent as Skunk Tank able to Poison Jab farm down. And we take that game. In the next battle, we see some very nice spice from the opponent. Shiny Luxray. The opponent saves switches into Swampert. Swampert tanks the crunch. We then see the pivot into Shadow Machamp. 
MG last second, commit to protect shield, correct the shield of the earthquake, and that is a huge shield. The opponent opts to send out their third, which is Gastrodon. I think this Pokemon's pretty interesting in this meta, especially with the rise in popularity recently of the basic bitch tin can Registeel and the popularity of that stupid butt plug carving. The downside of Gastron is it doesn't hit that hard and the champ actually able to survive the body slam. The opponent looking to put all their faith into Luxray. We're going to send back out Skunk Tank. The opponent rapidly running out of HP. And I think we're just going to simply fast move beat him down to the finish. The opponent fires off the Psychic Fang. Unwilling to debuff their own defense. By throwing the Wild Charge, we Poison Jab Farm down and take that game. And that is going to clutch up a very nice 4 and one set from MG. A very fine showcase. And my favorite core involving a fighter and a dark poison type. So if you're enjoying the content, smash that like button if you're new. Consider subscribing if you'd like your battles featured on my channel. The link to my battle submission form is down below. And as always, a huge thank you to everyone for watching. And I'll see you all in the next one.